Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode of uh, Hashtag Sports. Is that what it is? What's our motto here, Paul? I can't remember half the time. Come ride with us. Come right? ride with us. Hey, Matt Perino what wants to come in the car. We got wristbands and stuff. I don't know, we got, we've had a variety of sayings, Mario. I don't think we've... Yeah, bring them on. Yeah, we will. Uh, so, with everything that... car seat. Abs- oh, my God. Stop it. Stop it. So, with everything that's been going on with the Buffalo Bills, and, and we like to thank, obviously, Hashtag Nation for joining us. Um, with everything going on with the draft, hypotheticals and stuff, this is where we get into the crazies. And I got some crazy scenarios for you lined up in what may happen with the quarterback situation, especially in the AFC East. Now, I got two different scenarios for you, and this is going to be absolutely insane. The first scenario, which I, I, I haven't read it in a lot of places, but it is a real possibility. You look at the Cincinnati Bengals. Are they one player away? Are they one quarterback away? No, I don't think they are. I don't feel that they are. I think they have a, a multiple needs on that team. Um, and now, bear in mind, Hashtag Nation, these are just hypotheticals, and we're just going to have a little fun with this tonight. So, the hypothetical is this. Miami Dolphins trade all of their three first-round picks. I'm making this very simple. They trade all three first-round picks to get into the number one spot to draft Joe Burrow. Okay? That's that's number one. So they give Cincinnati all three of their first-round picks. They get the first overall pick. They take Joe Burrow. Because they did solidify a lot of things on their defense in, in the offseason, and it doesn't seem like they're going to have to do a lot with that. Okay. The other scenario is the news that came out with Tua failing his physical – uh, obviously, you know, reports are early now, but and more could come out by the time this episode comes out. However, Tua being at Bama, coached by Nick Saban, Nick Saban, who is a good friend of Bill Belichick, who coached together for the Browns. Could this be a play for the New England Patriots to try to have Tua slide and have teams avoid him? Because they're at 23. It's not like they're going to have to do something crazy. And and they'd probably be able to trade up because they do have 13 picks. I don't know how far they'd be able to trade up. But if Tua started to slide because of the reports, could you imagine those two scenarios happening? Now you have Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, Tua, and Burrow in the division. Now, I guess it really just kind of depends on if you're the Bills – are, isn't it always good when you're a welcoming rookie quarterbacks into the division, yes. right? Doesn't yeah. that, it doesn't, doesn't always sound tasty? It sounds tasty to me. <laughs> it sounds tasty to Belichick. I know that. It's tasty. I know, right? Okay, so Burrow. So what you're saying is Burrow to uh, Miami yes. and Tua to the Patriots. Yes. Yes. Okay. So so Burrow. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of Burrows. So Burrow going anywhere inside the division, I'm fine with. I. I, oh, okay. I don't believe in one-year quarterbacks. I've never believed in one-year quarterbacks, and that's what Burrow is. Uh, like, his completion percentage jumped, like, 20 points, you know, from, from 2018 <laughs> to 2019. Yeah. Um, you know, he had Justin Jefferson in both seasons. I know he's had some injuries, um, but he's kind of like that player in Madden when you go into the, you know, when you go into the franchise and you see there's that player that has everything, but he missed 2019. Uh, you know, with a knee injury, and you're like, oh, what do we do? <laughs> I know it, it's it's fascinating to me just to come up with these because, like, the likelihood of those two things happening, I know, are right. slim to none. But it's it's right. fun at this point in time, right before the draft. You know, some of the, some of the uh, you know the crazies come out, and and some of these scenarios that were thought of to be absolutely insane end up saying, hmm, you know. I, you know, could could both of those scenarios hold weight? I don't know. I mean, they're both. One is you're trading three firsts for the number one pick overall, which rarely happens at all. If, at all. And number two is like a conspiracy theory wearing my tin hat. You know, I mean, it's just interesting. But, but just the thought of Tua and Burrow in the division with, that already has Josh Allen and, and Sam Darnold is, fa- is fascinating to me because if you look like three years down the line after that, if that actually did manifest, and you look three years after that, who, who's who's messing with the AFC East at all? 
if, if I know you're not that high on Burrow, um, well, well, who would be your guy then? If, if, you, if Burrow's not your guy, as far as the quarterback class that's coming in, I mean, we haven't had. No, I mean, hashtag nation, uh, Bills Mafia, Bills in general, we haven't had really to talk about a quarterback because, I mean, we're, it always seemed like at draft time that was always the biggest topic that we talked about because for so many years they didn't really have one. Um, so now that they have Josh Allen, we have, we've kind of abandoned the quarterback talk. But in this quarterback class, if you had to pick one, like which, which one would be your guy? Yeah, so two is the best quarterback in this draft. Failed physicals aside, that is a short-term problem, right? You, you have a, a wrist injury to a quarterback is deadly, right? But it's no, it's not as deadly as an elbow injury. It's not as deadly as a shoulder injury. It's not as deadly as an ankle injury. Um, so I, I, I understand failed physical for a wrist. Okay, but a short-term problem. When you're drafting a quarterback in the first round, you're looking at the next five, six, ten years. You're yep. not looking at a running back in the first where you're looking at four years. You're looking at ten years, right? So I'm willing to take a take a slide on year one knowing that he's the best quarterback in the draft. So Tua is 1A to me, period, the end, Tua is 1A. Um, and if he slides anywhere outside of the top six, it's because teams are scared of his medicals, and that's a team that's looking too short-term, right? Mm -hmm. I think Tua is the best QB in this draft. Um, I think there's some other names out there, quarterbacks who are fascinating. Um, so, like, you have Jalen Hurts, you have Jordan Love, you've got, um, you know, some other quarterbacks who are fascinating, um, I don't, I don't know, Mar. Who, who's, who's your guy? Like, if you, if you had to pick a QB this draft and, and save Tua and Burrow, if you had to pick one, who would it be? If, if I don't have Burrow or Tua, right. who am I taking? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with Hertz. I know not a lot of people have been high on Hertz, but for the, the simple fact is this, and here's the, here's the angle I'm coming at it uh, from, just so I hashtag Nation can know. Uh, so we all know the, the, the college career of Jalen Hurts and how it progressed. You know, he was at Alabama, he transferred to Oklahoma. Um, you know, he was very successful at both places. I mean, after he was, I mean, the easy, the easy answer is, well, if he was better than, than Tua, you know, he would have played there. You know, he would have started there. Well, he did start. Uh, I like the athleticism, number one, that the kid brings to the position. I like the toughness that the kid brings to the position. Um, but the, the little hidden gem that I love about what Jalen Hurts was able to do, that he has a leg up on every other quarterback coming out, was this. He was at Alabama, went to a different college, a different location, learned a new offense, and still was successful. He has, in my opinion, as far as the psychological and background of it, he has a leg up on every other quarterback that's coming into the NFL right now. And... That scenario I just uh, explained, who does that remind you of, Paul? A, a quarterback that transfers and then goes to the NFL. Hey, that's an easy one. That's Russell Wilson, man. <laughs> that's Russell Wilson. Uh, it, Russell Wilson, the reason Russell Wilson was a third-round draft pick was because he transferred to Wisconsin. Yeah. Like, it's, it, that's, that's the reason he got drafted. Who's going to pick a 5'10 QB with a 60 some percent completion percentage from a spread system. No, no, he's, he's sixth, yeah. seventh undrafted. Yeah. Right. But the, the, the key about it is this, and I don't want this message to get lost in the fact is I'm just comparing the fact of a, a guy that transfers and then goes to the NFL. I'm not comparing Hertz to, to Wilson. I'm not right. doing that. I'm, I'm comparing their situations of how they made it to the NFL and what happened. I mean, that's it's such a little hidden, small thing for me. But um, going to a new team, learning a new system, and being successful in it, that is something that these other quarterbacks coming out didn't have to do. Um, they just stayed within their own system, learned it, had another year with it, and then became success successful. So uh, that's why I really like Hurts. I mean, that and and you could do anything with him on any given play, and uh, you, you'd be all right. You, you'd definitely be all right. Obviously, the the one thing about Hurts that a lot of people will hearken to is, um, you know, if you want to compare him to uh, like a mobile quarterback, which is fine. I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of people. I mean, a lot of the quarterbacks that come out you know, now I have to be mobile because some of the freaks yeah. that they have, there's no more Peyton Manning's in the NFL anymore. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but there's only one Greg Roman. So a lot of people that think that Hertz could be successful in the NFL, 
like a Lamar Jackson, there's only one Greg Roman, and there's only one guy that runs that type of system. So right. uh, it, it'd be interesting to see where he goes because, like, with all these guys, where you go is definitely going to be um, is definitely going to be huge. Why why the why why it's so enticing for Burrow to go to Cincinnati um, is because you have a head coach there that coached under McVay, and and that's just that's just, that's just a very fun offense to watch. <laughs> so right, um, right. Well, it, and if we're talking about how the division is going to be impacted by possibly adding two rookie quarterbacks, you know, talking about two of the Patriots makes sense, but just yeah. because they have the ammo to go get them if they want, yeah. you know, they, they really will. They, they have the ammo to go get them if they want. Um, and they've got a bunch of compensatory picks coming to them next season as well, because they play this game really well. Um, <laughs> but I, I really don't think, I think you're going to see them kind of settle for a quarterback like Jordan Love. And I, I'm not a big fan of Herbert out of Oregon. Um, I, I just, just don't, again, I'm not buying the hype. Um, yeah. Jordan Love is somebody who I think fits a little bit more because some of his weaknesses are um, going to be covered up by that system. Now, I think any Patriots fan should love the idea of starting a rookie quarterback, right? I, Belichick does not, not want to start a rookie quarterback. Uh, but I think Jordan Love has some of the tendencies that he would kind of look forward to. Um, like, I'll just give you ex- one of one of the things that Jordan Love isn't very good at is throwing the deep ball. Guess who doesn't give a crap about throwing the ball deep? Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick doesn't care. Doesn't. Do- no. Doesn't care. Does not doesn't care. care. Why wouldn't he Does be interested care. in a guy like Rosen then? <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I, I, that's an interesting idea. Right. Yeah. Uh, you have to assume Miami's going to cut Rosen eventually. They cut Rosen they, and draft Tua, right? and then yeah, you have to just assume they're going to cut him. They, um, they cut Rosen and draft Tua. Yeah. And then Rosen yeah. goes to the Patriots. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Why? Not? Let's just keep all these players in the same division. Let's just keep them all in the same division forever, right? Let's just keep Rosen and Allen and Darnold. What do we got to do to get Baker? What do we got to do to get Baker inside the division, right? How's that going to work? What do we got to do? I don't know, but another scenario which would be absolutely hysterical. I know we're getting way off topic here, but like Fitzpatrick, they they draft Tua, they cut Fitzpatrick, Josh Rosen starts the year, and Fitzpatrick goes to New England because. He, you want to talk about the deep ball? You want to talk about a quarterback that is extremely cerebral and and knows what to do in the NFL, and plus he's already played for the other three uh, AFC East teams, so why not? Well, it, wouldn't that be why you would cut Rosen over Fitzpatrick at this point? Like, it, you do have to be concerned about giving giving you know putting a bullet in the gun for Belichick. Like, you just have to be worried about it. If you cut Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's like the plague. He's going to start wherever he signs. He, he will murder, maim, or kill any competition in front of him. He is the most fortunate quarterback in NFL history because everywhere he's gone, the the player in front of him just either hasn't been good enough to, to outlast him or has been injured. Like Carson Palmer, ACL, comes to Buffalo, Trent Edwards, <laughs> Concussion. Concussion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, I mean, I, I, Ryan Tannehill, you know, like, <laughs> trade it doesn't him. matter. Yeah, <laughs> trade it. doesn't matter. Wherever he goes, he is just like a pariah to organizations. It's only been for a year or two. But it's they, they just look at it and go, eh, can it get much worse? Yep. Yeah, yeah, he'll be good. Hey, I'm a first-year head coach. I need someone that takes care of the ball. Okay. <laughs> well, which is very interesting. If we're circling this back to the Patriots, you talk about Jordan Love. He's a guy that wasn't taking care of the ball his senior year. No. I mean, I think he threw like 17 interceptions. So right. uh, there, that's a guy that, while I would agree with you, the style of player would would suit Belichick. It's that's that those 17 picks is something that he won't contend. He, he won't he won't put up with for long. He really won't. Um, right. Where did he even go anyway? Where'd, where'd Love go? Where do you go again? Utah State. That's not a real college. Shut up. No, I know, right? <laughs> Directional University. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But I mean, yeah, like I said, I, I, that, that was just a 
with the amount of time that I, th- I know a lot of people have in Bills fans, I, I hope they yeah. enjoyed the little fun scenario that we proposed for them today. Because, I mean, crazier things have happened in the draft, Paul. You and I have seen it. And yeah. that, that to me was, when I thought of it, I thought it was hysterical to think of. And, and I wanted to I wanted to talk with the nation about it. And hopefully they had some fun with this, uh, with this episode. And, uh, uh, you know, some of the stuff that we were talking about with the quarterbacks, though. I mean, I, I like Hurts. I, I do. I, there's just something about that kid that I think is going to be very special at the next level. I mean, I could be wrong. I've been wrong a lot of times before. This will be no different. But I just – I like the kid. I think that that little hidden gem of having to move schools and still be successful I think will help him make his transition to the NFL a little bit smoother. So um, so you really like you, – you think two is the best in the draft, huh? Yeah. I, I, th- yeah. I don't think there's a lot of people who would disagree with that. I really don't. Sure. And I agree with you on Herbert. I'm not a fan of Herbert either. So. No. No, Frankenstein. He's a Frankenstein to me. He's, yeah, it's, it's, he's Flacco. Oh, yeah, a little Flacco esque. <laughs> little Flacco esque. Flacco could throw a football through like six sheets of drywall, though. <laughs> the guy's got a cannon. <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> 